Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so glad and excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. Now, before we go into today's broadcast, can we make demands for our daily bread like the Lord instructed us to do on every broadcast? Are you ready? Join your faith with me right now as we declare, say, Father, I demand right now and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. I ask and I receive and my joy is full in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Now, I just feel in my heart, before I share with you what the Lord has laid in my heart, you know, to thank some of you that share messages, comment, you like, on both on Facebook, on YouTube, and even on, on every other medium that you relate with us. I really and sincerely want to appreciate your efforts in getting this gospel out. Now, I know there's still much, much we can do, praise God, but I am just so glad that you, without being told, you take that initiative and, and, and do things. We are touched when we see, and then especially those of you who um, contact us and send us offerings. Now, that's the most touching one. I'll tell you why. Now, you don't see us putting our account numbers on, on the screen, to, and, and we don't request for money. But for you to do that, then it's proof to us that you're in touch with the Lord. And number two, that you love us. Because because you're in touch with the Lord and you love us, it's easy for God to speak to you concerning us. And when he does, you obey him. So we are so grateful for your obedience to the Lord. And our prayer for you every day, because we pray for you every day. That's the command the Lord gave to us. And in our office, 3 p.m. to 4 p.m. is the time we pray for everyone who God has caused to partner with us. We pray for you every day. And so let me tell you this truth. Release your faith every day for a miracle. And God will cause it to happen. Praise God. And this is also an encouragement to us. Let's do some more. Let's share this message out. Let's, let's get more people to hear this truth and be blessed the same way it has blessed you. And God bless you as you do these things. Praise God. Now then, thank you Lord Jesus. We've been talking about the judgment of God and yesterday I was sharing with you on, on, on God meeting your needs and i remember sharing with you that the fact that god started out something with you doesn't mean challenges will not come the important thing there is when challenges come where does your mind stand now that's what makes the difference and your first response will determine if you're going down or you will end in victory god wants you to end in victory and the only way you can end in victory is even in the midst of the challenge, your mind is stayed on him. You know, I had this vision. If you know, I was praying and, and fasting, and I saw this vision. And in that vision, I saw two jets just stationed in the air. And from where I was, I, I, could, I could sense that they were over something maybe they were monitoring the ground or something like that then in a moment i saw those jets come down now those jets they were adorned in a, the, the, the flag of a certain country not our country and suddenly in my mind because i could sense in that vision that there was chaos going on and then in my mind i felt that this nation that these jets were adorning their national flag, they've come to save us. So, but then suddenly, the two jets just went down. 
Now I didn't see any. I didn't see any. Uh, it doesn't show that it was bombed or it was shot at. It just dropped from where. At the same time, the two of them just dropped. And then the moment they dropped, there was an explosion, loud explosions. And then the next thing I saw, fireballs were coming out from where the crash, where the jet fell. Fireballs were coming out. So in my mind, I realized then that those jets were like, they were, they were packages of bombs. And so they dropped and there was fireballs coming in. Everybody began to run. Now there was already chaos, but this one now tripled it. So everybody was running helter skelter and then I began to run too. Because that's the logical thing to do. So I began to run and then suddenly I heard the voice of God say to me, Why are you running? Then I asked myself the question, I said, Yeah, why are you running? So I paused and I thought to myself, I should have asked the Lord first concerning this situation and let him tell me what to do. I should have asked the Lord first. Now in that thought, I woke up from that vision. Now it was such a terrifying vision that I, I there's a reason I'm sharing this vision, I'll tell you at the end of it. It was such a terrifying vision that, you know, when you, I, I woke up panting, you know, I woke up well, like, Lord, you know how you went to go straight on your knees and said, no, this can never happen. Lord, this can never happen. But then, I was waiting for the Lord to give me a direction, how to pray, what the meaning is. And he didn't give me. I waited the first day, the second day. I waited for about three days. The Lord didn't give me anything. So, we had a prayer meeting. And I went for the prayer meeting. And we we're going to pray for our nation. But before stepping into the prayer meeting, I went into the office. I was like, Lord, I think you need to give me direction concerning that vision. Then the Lord spoke to me and said, now you see, that's the thing. Some of us don't know how to get God to speak to us. I'll tell you what I did that day because I was a bit desperate. Because it was just hanging. And except the Lord, I don't come out and start saying, you know, what I saw. Except the Lord tells me the meaning of it. So I went before the Lord. I said, Lord, I'm not going for into that prayer meeting until we clarify this matter. So if you don't want to clarify it, they are just praying there. I'm here. Until the Lord spoke to me. I said, the vision was not about anything else but you. I said, me, how? And then he said, Realize this, in the midst of chaos, there will be that natural instinct and things for you too. Because, I mean, you know, from what I saw, it was just logical. And then the Lord said to me, strengthen your heart to wait for me until I give you direction. Now. That would not make sense to a normal person. Remember, we're talking about the judgment of God. And for the Lord to bring that to my heart. Now, now he's not necessarily talking about there's going to be commotion, there's going to be now. He, he Well, that's another talk. But you see, in everything in life, he used that whole, now, all those pictures of a flag, and the chaos going on, all those things were to drive my mind to different directions. And then when life is now threatened, you respond, but not with the patience of inquiring of the Lord. Now someone may think, <laughs> you want to wait to inquire of the Lord? Hey, how quickly will the Lord speak in such situations? Knowing that you trust in Him. See, now that's the key. Does the Lord know that you are trusting in Him? Does He know? Sometimes I pray and I say to the Lord, Lord, I know that you know that I'm trusting you on this issue. I know that you know. And so you know also that I'm not going to make any move 
until you tell me what direction to move. So now I know you know I'm just here waiting for you. So when you're ready to speak, you can go ahead and speak. Now, because sometimes you think you're doing something. How do you know God is receiving what you're doing? Just like I've said several times, many of God's children tight. But how do you know God is receiving your tight? Oh, the church received it. The church receiving it doesn't mean God has received it. You should have known that by now. If an arm robber brings his tithes to church, will the church receive it? I say, hey, uh, the church will not receive a tithe from a known arm robber. No, it doesn't have to be known because nobody, these days, people don't bring their tithes and say, I'm, uh, this is the job I do, so I want to give God my tithe. No, they put it in an envelope. They, they get the account of the money and they send, send the money. So most times you don't even know who, who sends or or, or you even see the name, but you don't know who the person is. So the church will receive it, but doesn't mean God has received it. Oh, the church may be happy. Wow, we got this. But it doesn't mean God have accepted the offering from that person. So as a child of God, you should be particular about God knowing what you're doing and receiving from you what you're doing. You remember Cain and Abel. They both brought, an, brought their offerings to the Lord. And God received Abel's offering and he rejected Cain's offering. Meaning, God rejects offerings. Oh, he does reject offerings. Because some people just think in their mind that they can buy God with their money. Now they don't say, I want, I want to buy God with my money. No, they, they just feel, oh, if I give this big offering to this man of God, he is going to pray for me and God is going to hear. God knows you. And God is not going to look at you through the eyes of that man of God and say, hmm, oh, what a sweet smelling servant. Because my servant has accepted. No, sir. No. God may show mercy for a while because of the man of God involved. Yes, that's the truth. He may show mercy for a while. But eventually, if you don't repent and do what is right, you're going to still end up, end up in a mess. There is no two ways about it. Because God did not receive that offering. No, he didn't receive it. That's why as gospel ministers, we should be careful also to teach people the truth. <laughs> Praise God. Yes. The way you know that God has received your tithe, for example, is when he commands you where or what to do with that tithe. That's the only way you can truly tell that he has received it. And he's not even, oh, I paid my tithe yesterday, today I saw a miracle. That means God. No, that's not the proof that he has received it. Believe me. I've seen miracles. Praise God. But I can tell you this for sure. That's not the proof that God has received it. The proof that God has received your tithe, your offerings, is his word. That's why I said the surest way you can know is when he tells you who to give it to. And the moment you obey him where, when he tells you, I mean, it's proof that he has received it. It's proof that you surely are going to be blessed by that obedience. Praise God. And that's how it works. And that's how heaven operates. This is God's judgment. That's how God judges things. Praise God. Our time is up for today. Hey, listen. God bless you specially today. And let the Lord increase your knowledge of Him. Let the Lord increase the effectiveness of His work in your life. And may you see results everywhere you turn. In the mighty name of the Lord Jesus Christ. God bless you. Bye-bye.